everyone. Um, again, we are here uh, to um, go over our morning lesson. Um, we, I want to say I am Evangelist Bridget Edgeworth, and I bring you greetings from this church, New Life Apostolic Church. Um, the scripture says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. He is a good God. Um, we see brand new mercies every day that we're granted to by the Lord. And even through our grumbling and complaining uh, about this and that, various things that we may not like, God is still merciful unto us, and he chooses, he chooses not to cut us off. But before I get into um, this morning's lesson, I just want to say a few things on behalf of our pastor, Pastor James Anderson, and First Lady Kathy Anderson, we want to thank you for joining us today. Whether you're a member of this congregation or not, whether you are just watching us, we thank you for taking your time to listen to us on today. If you're looking for a home church or you just want someone to pray with you uh, or you just want somebody to reach out to you with some things that you would like to discuss, I ask you and I invite you to call us at 309-912-0015. We wanna know how you're doing. We wanna let you know that we care for you, that somebody is here for you. We care for you and God cares for you also. All right, all right. So this morning's lesson is entitled, Faithful to Forgive. Faithful to Forgive. Faithful to forgive. Now, the lesson is coming from Hosea 14, verses 1 through 9. The first focus verse is Hosea 14 and verse number 4. I'm going to read to you um, the focus thought, then I will read the lesson. I am going to uh, really stick with the focus uh, thought on today. Instead of breaking down, trying to break down every scripture, I will come from you with um, a surrounding the thought on the focus thought, which is God is faithful to forgive and to restore those who turn to him. God is faithful to forgive and restore those who turn to him. Amen. So let us read this morning's lesson. Hosea 14, 1 through 9, focus verse being Hosea 14, one, uh, 14 and verse 4. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn, the, turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, so we will render the calves of our lips. Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, ye are our gods. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will hear their back, heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew upon, unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his root as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree, for from me is thy fruit found. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things? Prune, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressor shall fall therein. Faithful to forgive. I, 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 the Lord has given me to go with the focus thought. Um, I have tried to pull out of the lesson to um, go over it with you, but as always, I encourage you to go back and listen and read the lesson for yourselves. So what we see here, a little background on this uh, particular text is Hosea, the prophet, is a prophet to the northern kingdom of Israel. Now the Lord told Hosea, we see that in the, in the very first chapter of the book of Hosea, the Lord told Hosea to take a wife of whoredom and children of whoredom. 
Basically, God had told Hosea to go and marry a prostitute, a promiscuous woman. And he said, so that her children would be conceived out of prostitution. That was what God wanted for Hosea. Now, God was using Hosea by giving a visual demonstration on how Israel was treating God. Israel had played the part of the harlot. They went after strange gods, and they had another lover, and it wasn't God. One of the commandments that God had given them back um, by Moses, he said unto Israel, he said to them, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And this is something that Israel had agreed to. If you read back in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe you will see that Moses has read all of this to them and the people agreed that that's what they would do. They would not have any God, other gods before him. So we see right now in this lesson today that, there, that God highlights uh, the similarities between Hosea and Gomer's relationship and his relationship with Israel. Now, Israel made this covenant with God and went after false gods like Hosea married Gomer, the prostitute, knowing that she would not be faithful and that she would leave him. But the Bible, and in the Bible, false gods may have been a little bit easier to define or identify. So when we read the word of God, we will see different gods and they are by name. But today, but in the, let me say in the scripture, what are some of the gods that we see? We see Baal was the supreme goddess among the Canaanites. Dagon, the god of the Philistines. Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Canaanites that was connected with fertility. But to sit today, some of our idolatrous worship is not as easily identified. And let's not just go with those things that we can see with, a, with an eye. Let's just go with some of those things that we may not see, things that we may worship. Now, I'm not talking about your car. Now, I'm not going to talk about your car and your home, but I want to look at some of the other things just quickly. So one of the things that we tend to idol is our money. And then we know that the Bible says that for the love of money, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. Money tends to make people do all sorts of things. We look at some of the things that are behind money. Look at sex trafficking. That's love of money. What is it that would cause someone to take a child and sell her or him into sex trafficking to be trafficked? Young people are being taken off the streets to be trafficked. Sex, another idol. It dominates everything, our music, our video games, our television, everything. Sex is everywhere. We also see other gods. Some people make education their god. We make our comfortability our god. You know, how many times is it, how many times, is it, and especially me, sometimes your mind is just so tired. Your mind is so tired that when you come home from your day's work, the first thing you want to do really is sit down and unload. And sometimes I'm so tired. And, and if you find yourself sitting in front of a television set, you gotta be careful. Because what happens is we fall off to sleep and some thoughts get in our mind and we wonder why when we go to sleep at night that our, we were restless, restless. Because we've allowed our comfortability and there's nothing wrong with being comfortable. There's nothing wrong with, with relaxing and taking some time, but we have to be careful that we don't get so comfortable that we don't do the works of the Lord. The Bible says, the scripture says, be sober. We've got to be vigilant, sober in our right mind. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is as as a roaring lion <clears throat> and walketh about seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> what is being sober? Well, if you look at it, one author described it as being free from intoxicating influence. Sober. Being free from intoxicating influences. Whether those influences are your money, whether they're friends, whatever they may be. If it takes the place of God, you need to be careful. 
But God in his mercy, God was merciful towards Israel, like Homer, like uh, Hosea was to Gomer. And despite of the sin, despite of our sin, God still loves us. Despite of our sin, Hosea still loved Gomer. Now we're still looking at the focus verse, the focus thought that says God is faithful to forgive and to restore those who turn to him. The dictionary defines faithful as true to one's word, reliable. Faithful comes from the root word faith. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Faithful, faithfulness, if we look at faith, faithfulness is exercising of your faith and put it into action. I believe God for everything. Faith is the substance. It's what you put into it. Hallelujah. It's what you put in. It's the base. It's the foundation. I believe God for what he says. I believe it and I take it as his word. And we can't turn against it. But yes, yes, we all fall short. But that's not our desire to go in a direction that goes against God. We have got to stand on the word of God. It reminds me of Abraham. After his long await for a son, that God put him through the test. The Bible says God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and offer him for a burnt offering. After Abraham had prepared the altar and, and, the, and he laid his son on the altar. He took a knife to slay him. And the angel spoke and said, called out, lay not thy hand on the lad. <coughs> Abraham was faithful to God, believing that if God said it, I stand on it. If God told me to do it, I do it. Gomer didn't, Homer, uh, Hosea didn't question God. You know, I, 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 as, I, as I read this lesson, I just had to, I thought, Lord, this is, it's, we need to look at this. Lord, if you told me to go, if you told me to do it, will I stand on your word? Will I stand on your promises? Will I stand on what you told me to do? Or will I say, oh, that's a bit much. Lord, can't you give me something else to do? Because there were others in the Bible that got, you know, as our lesson talks about it, they, they had other things. They didn't have to go and marry a prostitute. It, Jonah reminds me of another one. Jonah had another, he had something else. Jo Lord, Lord, why do you want me to go talk to the people? They don't listen. Jonah had another plan. I got another boat I want to get on. Hallelujah. I got another trip I want to take. We put God on hold. I, Lord, I, I don't think that, I don't think that this is what you want for me right now. Jesus, but Hosea loved Gomer. Hallelujah. But when the Lord commanded Hosea to marry Gomer, a prostitute, he did so to show how far he would go to reach Israel through the power of his forgiveness and restoration. And by using Hosea, this would be someone who could truly understand his brokenness. Hallelujah. The love of God is so great. And he loves us even when we are broken. Hallelujah. He loves us when we're at our lowest. When we are completely unlovable. Paul said, for in me, when we're unlovable. Look, look at the word of God. Paul said, in me, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. There's nothing good in me. Nothing good in me. When I'm unlovable, God still loves me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we struggle with the same sin over and over and over again. Embarrass ourselves that, Lord, I'm right back here again. I let my mouth get me right in trouble again. Can I live by myself and live to myself so I'm always going to be right? It's not what God called us to do. Struggling with the same sin over and over again. And even still, God still loves us and he still accepts us. He accepts me for even the wrong that I do. Lord, forgive me. That's not some place that I want to stay. I'm grumbling, I'm complaining. I don't have this and I don't have that. I don't like this and I don't like that. 
Oh, wretched man that I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Constantly complaining. This is a year where we could say, you know, if you've never seen anything else, you've never seen the blessings of the Lord, which I can't even imagine. But if you say you've never, even if you, you don't know who God is, if you've never seen blessings fall, if you've never seen a blessing, take a look back over this last year and a half where God has blessed us immensely. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of us have gotten one, not one, two, three checks and jobs, even though we've lost jobs, God has still made it so that we food to eat still have on our tables. God has shown us who he is and that he cares for us and what he can do. He told us, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The scripture says, take no thought for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Take no thought for tomorrow. Hallelujah. He's got it all under control. He's got it all in his hands. Hallelujah. The Lord reaches down to the depths of our sins and he shows mercy on us even when we don't deserve it. When we fail him, he still loves us. Can we say that? When you fail me, do I still love you? Or I'm, oh, I don't got time for you. God still loves us. He still loves us. When we turn from him and put other things before him, we put people before him. He still loves us. And he loves us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Even though we might not even be able to <coughs> comprehend <coughs> the love of God. <coughs> we must make an effort and return to the Lord our God. The Bible says to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. You got to lay it aside. Put away. Put aside your false loves. They, 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 you know, there's no good return on it. It's not going to give you anything. You know, you've heard the saying, you can't take it with you. When you die and go on to, to meet the Lord, when you die and go on to meet your maker, there is nothing in this life that you're going to be able to take with you. Naked you came in this world, and you're going to go out the same way. Nothing can you take with you. Hallelujah. He still loves us. We, may, uh, we need to make an effort to return to God. Repent of your sin. Put aside everything and return to God. Renew your covenant with the Lord. Renew your relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 12 and 1, it, <clears throat> it said, as I just quoted earlier, lay aside every way, every way, whatever the false God, whatever it may be. Hallelujah. Whatever it may be. Some of us, you know, we suffer from, from a lot of things that we put before God. I talked about earlier, we put our education before God. Hallelujah. We put what we look like before the Lord. It gets, it gets us stumped. You know, we can't do this, can't do that. We're so concerned with what our outer man looks like. What is that heart like? What, is, what are we like before the Lord? Lord, how do you see me? That's the question. How do you see me? And help me to forgive myself. Help me to repent of my wrong. Hallelujah. 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 Ask the Lord to forgive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Israel. Israel needed to pray and ask God, restore me, Lord. Restore me. Restore my relationship with you. And even if we know that God has forgiven us, even if you know that God has forgiven you, you still need to confess your sins and ask, ask for his forgiveness. Hallelujah. It's, 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 it's no different than if you stepped on somebody's toe. They know you didn't do it intentionally, but you still need to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Please forgive me. You hurt someone's feelings. You know you hurt them. You, you can tell if you look at them. I hurt you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. That is not my desire. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, when, when uh, Peter preached to the Jews in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, glory, hallelujah, the people were moved. And the Bible said, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. They were touched. Ha. And said unto the Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what must, what shall we do? 
What, what, what shall we do? You know, that, that's your confession. What, what do I need to do to be forgiven? What do you need to do to be forgiven? Hallelujah. They were moved by such a powerful message that Peter had spoke. And they wanted to know, how can I change? Hallelujah. How can I fix what I have done? Lord, forgive me. This is God. Christ died for us. Forgive me, Lord, of my sin. How do I do that? Well, Peter said, first you got to repent. Be sorry for the sin that you have committed. You got to repent. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how we identify with Christ. It's through the baptism. Christ loved us enough to give his life for us. He laid down his life for us. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of a scripture. That says, what shall separate me? Can there be anything that separates from the love of God? Is there any thing that God would allow to separate us from his love? Hallelujah. When we are unfaithful, he's still faithful. When we are unjust, he is still just and forgiving. And even when we think that no one could possibly love us, he still will share the greatest love of all times with us. Christ has such a love for us. Amen. Church, let us pray that God shows us how to love and forgive, just like Ho, uh, Hosea forgave Gomer. And not look at what that person is doing. Can we love them enough to pray for them? Can we love them enough that when they come into the church or when we see them on the street that they don't look like us, can we love them enough past that to get out God's word? Or are we so ready to pounce on the wrong that they see. I don't care how much you, I don't know how, I don't want, I don't know how much you care. I want to know how much you care. I don't care how much you know, right? I don't care how much you know, but I want to know how much you care for me. How much do you care for me? How much do you care for me? If you want me to come into the house of the Lord, if I see you on the street, do I care enough? We care like God cares. Enough to forgive. We have no heaven or hell to put anyone in. So let's not crucify them. Let's not crucify them where we are. Let's not put our cross out there and want to hang them and crucify them. Can we love them where they are? Can I meet you where you are? Hallelujah. Can I love you enough to bring you to God? Hallelujah. Or am I killing you? Am I killing you when I see you? Jesus, we need to pray that God shows us how to love and to forgive. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they sound like. Hallelujah. Get him before the Lord. Get him before the Lord and allow God to do the change. Hallelujah. God's love towards us is unconditional. And although sometimes the things we do anger him, he still forgives us. When we sin, I'm coming to my close. When we sin and repent, God is faithful to forgive us and to restore us if we turn to him and ask for his forgiveness. Amen. May the Lord bless you. The lesson is faithful to forgive. Go back and read the lesson. May God bless you. May you have a continuous blessed day. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Truly, I thank God for being with you today. I thank God for another opportunity to stand and teach God's word to God's people. I thank God for my pastor, Pastor James Anderson of New Life Apostolic Church. Many times as I stand, you will hear me say, I thank God. Because anytime you stand before the people of God, it is truly a privilege and an honor and is one that I truly cherish and thank God for. This week in our lesson, the author has given us the title, Faithful to Forgive. Our focus thought, God is faithful to forgive and restore those who turn to him. 
The focus verse of our lesson this week is Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4. Our lesson text is also coming from the book of Hosea chapter 14 verses 1 through 9. Our focus verse, Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4. I will hear their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from him. Lesson text, Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord, Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously. So will we render to calves of our lips. Assured shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods, for in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding, I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth as roots as leaven. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as an olive tree, and his smell as leaven. They that dwell under the shadow shall return. They that revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him, and am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things? Prudent, and he, sh and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. This week in our Sunday school lesson, the author is talking about forgiveness. And he uses as the illustration the story of Hosea and Gomer. Hosea was a righteous man. A man of God, I truly believe, truly believe to be a man of faith. Hosea was a prostitute. However, God instructed Hosea to marry God. And the reason for this is to teach us a lesson about forgiveness. As the lesson illustrates, God wants his people at that time, the people of Israel, and even for us today to understand the great depths of love that God has for each and every one of us. But to get to that level of love, he talks about forgiveness. The writer has a saying in this lesson that I want to read. Forgiveness can often be difficult because even our best efforts to let go of the past can be thrown forward in memories that seemingly would not die. And I can bear witness to this. There are times in my life, and it's one thing I want to do as I stand here. I want to learn from my mistakes. And trust me, Brother Cooper has many in his life. And one of the things that I am learning, and, and hear what I'm saying, I am learning. I commend those that can sit back and listen and say, I've overcome. Well, praise God. Thank God for you. But Brother Cooper, I'm learning. And I'm learning to let go of the past. I'm learning to forgive. Now, I'm not saying I'm walking around holding on to grudges. That's not what I'm saying, nor is that what I'm doing. But every now and then, every now and then, a past infraction, judgment, ill deed creeps into my thought. 
And sometimes my mind wants to go back and dwell on things of the past and things that have happened and things that I want to let go of, things that I believed I have let go of. You see, forgiveness is something that it takes work. You see, we don't totally forget. We try not to bring it to the forefront of our mind, but nevertheless, does anyone totally forget of an incident? We may go weeks, months, years, but nevertheless, the Word of God asks us to forgive. And so this week's lesson talks about Hosea and Gomer. As I said, Hosea was a righteous man, a man I truly believe that loved God. And in being obedient to the Word of God, he married a prostitute. And the lesson illustrates that Gomer, his wife, was an unfaithful wife. And I don't know, and I can only speculate, I don't know if Gomer ever truly loved Hosea or not. I don't know. But I do know this, the lesson says that Hosea loved her. You see, Hosea represents God. God loves us. God loves all of mankind. And that's the illustration of Hosea. But you see, the problem is this. We as a people, now I'm gonna say saved and unsaved. I'm gonna put it in this category. We as a people have a tendency from time to time not to be faithful to God. Now you're gonna say, what you talking about, Cooper? There are times we know the word of God. We know our heavenly father. We know the bridegroom. But there are times we are disobedient. And this disobedience puts us in a category of not being faithful to one that loves us. The one that paid the price for us. You see, disobedience is sin. Now you might say, well, you know what? Go check the book out. Go read the Bible. Don't take my word for it. Check the book. You see, disobedience is sin. And when we sin, we are not being faithful to God. But here's the good thing about it. When we sin, God says, I love you. I love you. And all God is asking us to do is to repent. When Peter preached to the people in the book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 38, then Peter said unto them, Repent! You see? There's a lot of ugly stuff in my life. You see, I can't talk about your life because I don't know you. But I can talk about the life of Cooper. And there are things in my life that I am not proud of. There are things that I thank God that God has forgiven me of. There are things that are so far in my closet I hope I never see. But I know one thing. God says I can take all of your past all of your sin, all of the ugliness in your life, and I can forgive you. You see, that's the hardest thing for people today. Now, I'm going to tell you about people. You see, people don't always want to forgive. But thank God he is not like people. You see, man, to include woman, always want to hold something on top of you, or at times when the whole thing's against you. But God says, I will forgive. And he says, all we got to do is repent and come to him. I thank God that he is not like man. So in the story of Gomer and Hosea, every time Gomer went out to commit sin, 
or to have an adulterous affair, Gomer would look, Hosea would look for her, find her, bring her home, and here's the key part, forgive her. Forgive. Now, I'm not asking you to put yourself in Hosea's position. Because that's a great thing to ask. All I'm asking you to do is think about this. What kind of man is Hosea or was Hosea? Better yet, what kind of God is it that we serve? That as much as we go out there, commit adultery, go out there and play the role of the whoremonger, God has open arms, open arms. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has open arms talking and speaking to the prodigal son, to the prodigal daughter says, come on home. Come on home. Repent of thy sins. Come on home. You see, that's love. That's love. Many people don't come back to church and talk about the backslider is because they feel that people won't forgive them. Well, who are people? Think about this. Do people have the power to put me in heaven? Do people have the power to put me in hell? No. God does. And if my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, I forgive you, then who is man to say he doesn't forgive? But if God says, come home, come on back, that's what he wants from us. The Lord commanded Hosea to marry a prostitute named Gomer in order to represent the lengths God would go in order to reach Israel through the power of forgiveness and restoration. You see, God wants us to come back. He wants to restore us to a place of innocence and through God's grace and God's mercy, this is what he can do. Part of the problem, and I look at this in Hosea's life, I'm sure there was pain, and I don't know if this is a problem, I use the word, but I'm sure in my imagination that Hosea experienced pain, frustration, anxiety, and at times even anger, that every time he extended his love, every time he extended his forgiveness to Gomer, Gomer would go out and commit the same acts again, over and over, going out with various men, being with various men, having sex with various men. And that's a tough one for us, yes. She would go out and have sex with various men. And Hosea would go out there, get her, bring her home and say, I forgive you. Why? Because I love you. And we go out today and do all kind of horrible and evil things. Intentionally, not intentionally, but God forgives us. That's love. God hasn't turned his back on us. Sometimes we turn our back on him. But the thing about the lesson this week is that Hosea, despite all the things that Goma was doing, rejecting his love, going out, cheating on him, he couldn't abandon it. And just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ doesn't abandon us. God doesn't walk away from us. Many times we walk away from him because we're chasing after something that we feel is better. What out there is better than God? What out there is better than the love of God? What's out there? So what are we chasing after? What are we running after that is better than God? Nothing. And yet we still, at times, 
become unfaithful to God because we as human beings is chasing after something that we feel is better than that which God has already given us. What is it? What is it? I don't know. If you know, by all means, please let me know. I'm talking about a man that shed his blood on Calvary. I'm talking about a man that gave us the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loved us so much that he died on Calvary for a sinner to save someone like me. And yet, there are hundreds and thousands out there who don't see the love that he gave, the love that he had, still chasing something out there that they feel is better than what my Lord and Savior has to offer. I don't know what it is. I look at the life of Paul. Before he was converted to Saul. You see, Saul was a murderer. He even talks about it in the book of Acts. He held the coat while Stephen was being killed. Paul stated that he was out there to hunt down the Christians. He would bring them to prison, men, women, and children. It didn't matter if they was kicking and screaming and pleading and begging, please, please have mercy on me. Please, it didn't matter to Saul. And yet, one day, on the road to Damascus, a light shined upon him, and our Lord and Savior spoke to him. So if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can forgive Saul, who truly, as he stated, was a murderer, if God can forgive him, What's holding us back? Why can't I come to the church and say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned? God wants the backsliders to come back. His arms is open. Just like the father of the prodigal son, his arms is open. God wants the backslider to come back. Come back to the church. Come back to the fold. All he asks that you repent of your sins and come back. That's what Hosea was looking for Gomer. That level of love. Gomer was out there playing the role of the prostitute. Sleeping, having children by various men, but none of that mattered. None of that mattered. Playing the role of the harlot, out there running around and having children by various men. And Hosea says, you know what? It doesn't matter. Why? Because I love you. Woo! Think about that, brothers. I love you. I want you back. More importantly, I forgive you. Why do I forgive you? Because I love you. And that's to illustrate the type of love that God has for each and every one of us. So I encourage you to spread the word to the backsliders out there. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants you to come back to the church. Whatever you think you've done that is too hard, God can forgive. If for God can forgive a murderer, God can forgive any of us of our sins. So don't let your past hold you back from having a beautiful and bright future. Because God loves us. And what God is saying, I forgive you. Come to me, ask for repentance, and I can forgive you. And this is the lesson that God is showing 
through the relationship between Hosea and Gomer. Despite all the things that Gomer did, all the things, the average man would probably be freaking out. How dare you cheat on me? How dare you go out here and sleep and have sex with other men? See, that wasn't the attitude of Hosea. And that's not the attitude of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He forgives us. I think about the Lord's Prayer as I get ready to close. It says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And there's one key verse in here that you know where I'm going to. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You see, the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer. It's a way of living. But in those words of encouragement and guidance and direction, he says, For let us forgive. God forgive us as we forgive those that have trespassed against us. You see, in the church, people have hurt us. Yeah, I said that. In the church, people have hurt us. They have said things that hurt our feelings. They have said things that they didn't even know. But you see, it's up to us to decide if I'm going to carry that weight or am I going to let it go. They may not have known that they hurt us, but it's up to us. We have the power that God has given us on this earth to forgive that individual, male or female, past or present. We choose to forgive or we choose to constantly hang on to that baggage. And as long as we hang on to that baggage, it drags us down and we can never be what God wants us to be because we're dragging old baggage. Forgiveness. If God is willing to forgive us of the baggage that we carried, why can't we forgive others? Think about that. God loves us. God forgave us. And it's time that we learn to forgive others. Amen. God bless. Huh?